interesting little thing. Uh, was it yesterday, I believe? Or a day before yesterday. I'm sitting in the living room just uh, texting back and forth with a friend. And he drives for a bunch of the uh, delivery companies here in town. Uber Eats, Postmates, Amazon, all that type of stuff. I was pondering if there was a way I could do, deliver Uber Eats where I wouldn't have to actually get out of the van and go up to people's houses because a lot of houses are not accessible. But then he mentioned that Postmates has a walker and a bicycle mode. And my thought is, if I stick to the downtown area, I could basically just use the bounder and go do deliveries that way. And most of it's gonna be businesses and buildings and a majority of the buildings down there are accessible. But he also mentioned that a lot of the uh, women Uber Eats drivers at night won't get out of their car and they have people come outside. They don't get downrated for that. I got to thinking, well, hey, if I do happen to come across a place that I can't get inside of, I could just send them a message and say, hey, can you come outside? I'm in a wheelchair. And I don't think there would be a problem with that. Anyways, I'd applied for Postmates when they first were here in Portland like four years ago. You had to go through some 90 minute training class and all this other stuff. I was the only person back then that they didn't hire out of the group of 31 people or something that showed up, which I thought was strange. He told me, hey, here's a referral link. You should try signing up again. I'm sitting there messing around on my phone and I download the app and it's like, okay, take a selfie and then, okay, we're gonna do a background check and all this stuff. So I take a selfie, I punch in all my information and it says, oh, this takes up to three minutes to review your selfie and make sure it's okay. So I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, this comes up on my screen and it's like, oh, go online. That was it. It took three minutes and I can deliver for Postmates. Um, so I went into the app and for vehicle, since I don't have a motor vehicle in there, you have walker and bicycle mode. So I figured, hey, the next day, which was yesterday, I'll just go downtown and uh, let's see how this works. That's exactly what I did. So let's see how that went. Well, I've made it down here to a Goodwill. It's a nice open parking lot. And I know parking patrol won't screw with me because I can't use a lot of the actual disabled parking spaces in downtown. And it's just across the river from here. So I've got, just for no reason, I grabbed this shopping basket. I wasn't sure if it would be weird to have people's food on my lap. So I figured putting food in a basket might be good. Now I've had a lot of delivery jobs in this town. So this is the first time I'm doing one in a wheelchair. So it will be interesting. Yeah, let's see how this works. Okay, um, I'm gonna set this to bicycle mode, I think, for now, since that'll probably give me a little bit more range than walking. All right, let's see what we get here. We're peak lunch hour right now. Uh, I think while this thing is tabulating, I might uh, head over towards the actual downtown area there. Okay, I got about 20 feet. Um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, over to brunch box. so I'm gonna have to switch to walker mode. Bicycle is way too aggressive. And back across the river we go. Okay, well, I'm not sure about all that. Um, let's get back to the house. I have thoughts. Well, a couple of things. First off, it's extremely cold outside and it was like 34 degrees today while I was out running around. But the bicycle delivery mode on the post 
on the Postmates app is pretty aggressive. I got a couple of different um, jobs or orders or whatever where they wanted me to go like six or seven miles. So I declined those. I took that one order, delivered it. I mean, that would be fine. I mean, I was wearing thermals and stuff. I probably should have gloves and a heavier jacket and whatnot. But I don't know. It just made me kind of think back to running around in a busy metropolitan area in a wheelchair, crossing streets and all that. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm a little bit more apprehensive around vehicles now for some reason. Uh, I'm sure that'll go away. But assuming the weather cooperates, this might be an interesting thing. They had a sign-up bonus where you get like $575 if you complete 75 deliveries within your, well, by January 29th, which worked out to about five deliveries a day. I only did one delivery yesterday and I haven't done any today, so I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. But there is a referral bonus that you get after doing 80 deliveries. My friend that sent me the link gets a bonus and then I think I also get something. But anyways, I mean, in a place like Portland where there are decent sidewalks and transit and whatnot, I mean, I could just hop on the train or the streetcar or something if it happens to be going by when I'm going a certain direction. But I don't know. I uh, The one delivery I did, it was like $3.58 that I made for the delivery. And then today it told me that I got a tip of $3.10. And that took me probably 35 minutes, something like that, to complete. So I don't know. It's a, it's a thing. Apparently you can do it. I'm going to keep screwing around with it. I think it's a little easier than uh, screwing with those electric scooters that I was charging before. A lot less physical labor. I just go into restaurants and get stuff and then take it to people. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to keep screwing around with it and see what I think. But uh, it, it's nice to go out and like feel like you're contributing to society occasionally, even if you're just bringing people their food. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm pretty sure that person's chicken strips are cold by the time that I got there. I was in a paper bag, and I just had a grocery basket in my lap, but uh, I need to get one of the insulated bags if I'm going to be doing this, but anyways, yeah, interesting. I got an easy lock for the new van. A friend had one in his van, and he never uses it. Honestly, it's kind of in the way, because trying to get in and out of there with a number of chairs makes things a bit obnoxious. They always use tie down straps on his chair anyways, so he said, hey, I want this thing out of here, you need an easy lift, so we can make that happen. What we decided to do was take his van to a shop and have them professionally uninstall it. That way I'm not screwing around inside of his van and they know exactly how that stuff works anyways, so. So I just had to pay them a hundred bucks for the uninstallation and they gave me all the parts and a box, which is awesome. By the way, there's some strange sounds going on in here. The, uh, the 3D printer has re-emerged I got a Fire TV and the remote just sort of like wobbles around. So on Thingiverse I found a little case that you can put around this thing so it sits flat on your desk and you can push buttons on it without it wobbling everywhere. But then I accidentally downloaded the wrong thing and it was already printing so I just let it go and I ended up with a desktop stand instead. <laughs> um, eh, whatever. But since the 3D printer was out I decided, oh hey, let me make this little GoPro stand. Uh, the GoPro goes on here and then you can sit the thing flat, nice and low profile. And then you might have seen on Twitter the, um, the Drink Coaster Pro. This is the same pattern that the front of the Mac Pros have and made it into a drink coaster. So you can set your drinks on it. Not like I care about anything in here. None of it's like gonna be affected by moisture from a beverage, but I thought that was kind of neat. But anyways, I uh, got a few clips from the Easy Lock in uninstallation stuff or whatever. Okay, so today, um, getting an Easy Lock for this van. A friend is meeting me here in a little bit. I'm at a uh, wheelchair van uh, shop, and uh, he basically has an Easy Lock in his van that's been constantly in the way, and he doesn't use it. He uses tie down straps, so. He's gonna give it to me. I'm just gonna pay the shop like an hour and a half of labor to uh, remove it from his van. And then uh, we should be good. I'll be able to get it installed in this thing. I'm a little bit early. Well, let's go inside and see what's up. As I throw a bolt on the floor.
Well, at least we have one of these things that'll screech now when you turn on the key. <laughs> You're gonna be able to get in there a lot easier now too because oh, all this thing's not on the floor. So I suppose I'm supposed to pay someone something. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, those just look like those panel plugs, but if you said waterproof, I would assume, but you never know. I mean, you can have someone poke at them and see if they're loose or whatever. But the horses put a bolt up down there, right? Yeah, honestly, and if you did, I would just use like carriage bolts that have the flat dome top on them. That way, they're not going to be sticking up. But what would keep them from spinning when you tighten them? Uh, just your hand or whatever. Okay. They they sort of have a square thing on the top, so it'd probably bite in there a little bit. But Gravity. yeah, Gravity stuff. Shit. Cool. Well, it should yeah, make things a little bit easier now. <laughs> really, really ugly plug on the dash. But I'll take it. Oh, it's because one of the same ones. <laughs> it is. That's what kind of makes me think. I think they're just little... Like the actual panel plugs. Yeah, I don't know about that on uh, exhaust heat and water. Yeah, those ones down there, we can take a look. But, I mean, if if they are just those crummy ones, we, I'll get you some carriage bolts we can put in there. Yeah, I'm not too worried about And you don't need to use nylocks on those. Um, so you can just thread them in by hand with a little Loctite and they won't go anywhere. Okay. Yeah, next time I see you, we can check it out or whatever. Saturday. Yeah. All right, we have easy lock parts. <laughs> now I just need to get a bracket for the Quantum and also replace this lift and uh, we will be set to go. All right, prime traffic hours. Yeah. Real quick, let's uh, take a look at this easy lock and I'll show you kind of how it works. This is the system here, basically all of it. You've got the main locking system and that thing interfaces with, with this bracket that goes on the bottom of your chair. And this bolt sticks down and basically latches in like that, like in that clip you saw earlier when I was screwing around in the store. Then we have the main controller here and that is where all the screeching sounds come out of, right there. Then that connects to this little controller which goes on your dashboard and that can silence the screeching noises if you want it to or it'll also let the lock release when you hit the button. And there's a few lights on there. Then we also got some of these giant spreader washers, which help uh, spread out the load. So you drill holes through the floor, and then you sink these bolts in through the bottom of the van, and you put these giant washer spreader things on there to help spread out the load on the bottom of the floor of your van. So that's it, pretty simple thing. We've got this giant metal plate that goes on the bottom of your chair, and uh, I still haven't repaired the steampunk chair. Um, I think I'm gonna do a 2.0 version on that. I've got a few other ideas of different things to do on it, and I'm sort of working on gathering parts for that right now, but anyways, yeah, easy lock. Now that I've got that easy lock, it's, well, it's gonna be a little bit. I still have to swap out the lift in the van. Ooh, power's blinking. Um, and I still have to get an easy lock bracket for the bottom of the Quantum 4 front which is sitting over there. Once I get those two things done, uh, the van will pretty much be done and ready to go. But I've got to have that bracket for the Quantum before I can figure out where to put the Easy Lock on the floor. Because I've got two different chairs I want to be able to use with it, so I have to make sure that they're going to be placed in such a way that both chairs will still be usable, and I can drive the van in the right position and all that. But anyhow. Real quick though, I, uh, I don't think I ever actually explained it, but the designation for how long the vlogs are. After posting the uh, Bounder Repair video, I got a number of messages from, actually quite a few, messages from people saying, hey, your videos are too long. Uh, I always get those though, and I always get one saying they're too short. So, the way it works is just regular vlog is gonna be somewhere between like 12 and 25 minutes or so, somewhere in there. Mega vlog is 30 minutes or longer, and mini vlog, which I don't think I've done any of those, would be like maybe nine minutes or less. But the plan is to sprinkle in some more videos like this one that are a bit shorter than normal. That way you can just watch something real quick and go about your day. The videos over the last couple months or so, they've been, maybe about half of them have been mega vlogs, uh, but they've been pretty long. So I'm gonna try and see if we can sort of do a little bit of everything. Because like I said, my content's not always wheelchair related. Sometimes I'm fixing MacBooks, which I actually just recorded a video about that. So that's going to be coming out soon. 
and sometimes I'm doing just other random stuff throughout the day, and sometimes I'm doing nothing at all, and I still talk to the camera. So, anyways, um, the regular vlog, mega vlog, mini vlog, and then other clips that are thrown in sometimes as well. But anyways, that's the magic key to what the titles mean, and yeah, I'm gonna try and just mix it up a little bit, keep everyone happy if possible. I know that's not always a thing that's possible when you have a bunch of people <laughs> that know you're out there and watch your stuff, but anyways, gonna try and spread it around and make it work for everyone, but anyhow, I will catch you later. <laughs>